Hey guys, my name is Ryan Central and welcome to Hitscan. How to improve your aim. It's the most commonly asked question that we get and we wanted to make the most jam-packed video on how to improve your aim when it comes to consistency, sensitivity and all the stuff in between. We've partnered up with AimLab who are a free-to-play aim trainer that you can check out throughout this video and also in the description to bring you the top 30 tips when it comes to improving your aim and being consistent whilst also avoiding a fair few mistakes. The first tip that we wanted to go over is to find your own settings. Because tactical shooters like Counter-Strike and Valorant are so aim intensive, a lot of people tend to look at what the pros run when it comes to sensitivity and DPI and just flat out copy it. But that's the sensitivity that tends to suit them. Everybody's different and the lack of experimentation for you with your own sensitivity is going to bite you in the backside down the line. Be sure to experiment between various sensitivities. Increase it a little bit, decrease it a little bit, find a medium between the two. Experiment to a point where you're happy with the sensitivity that you have and then leave it. Constantly changing your sensitivity is going to make your aim super inconsistent. So the longer that you stay with the sensitivity that's right for you, the better it will be in the long run. The second tip and another pet peeve of mine is practice aim in between games. Something like AimLab is great to use for warming up, but I feel a lot of people tend to just use AimLab to warm up. They play it for 15 minutes and then play 10 games of Valorant. And I think a really good tip is to throw in a couple of aim lab sessions in between games. Play 15 to 20 minutes of aim lab doing various playlists like the ones that were shown you on screen. Tip number three is isolating angles and being able to slice the pie. Our friend Rambo did a video on this recently talking about the importance of this and we've also highlighted it in a recent video too. You don't want to peek out wide on an angle where four to five people can get an easy shot on you. The best way to do this is to slowly strafe out from angles and individually clear off positions where enemies could be placed. And this is really important because you need to isolate those angles and have 1v1 engagements. It doesn't matter if you have the nuttiest aim in the world with a grid shot score of 400k plus. If you just jump out into the open where multiple people can kill you, you will never win those fights. Never in a million years. Tip number four, practice under pressure. One of the common things that people say to improve your aim in Counter-Strike is to kill 1000 bots in a custom lobby like I'm showing you on screen. This is pretty good when it comes to practicing certain flicks of aim or even aiming at head level, but the problem with this is because you're killing so many bots over a long space of time, you tend to sort of leisurely do it. You might have a podcast or Netflix open on the other monitor. You might be just slouched in your chair like the guy from that South Park World of Warcraft episode. When you practice, you need to practice with some amount of pressure on you. It's like a sports person going for a leisurely stroll when they should be sprinting. It shouldn't be like that. That's not how you get better. Because AimLab keeps track of your scores, it's a great way to keep challenging yourself, trying to beat your best score, constantly trying to improve. And because you have a set amount of time and a score to try and beat, that's a great form of pressure in order for you to practice your aim and to make sure that you're trying as hard as you can. But regardless of whether you use AimLab or just like Deathmatch, for example, you want to be trying your hardest no matter what you do. Tip number five is to counter strafe. This is an important factor that a lot of people really haven't got their heads around. When you move in Valorant, your shots are inaccurate. When you're still, your shots are accurate until you start spraying. But there is a way to instantly become accurate after moving, and that's by counter strafing. Moving to the right side, for example, pressing the left button, which brings you to a stop, and then at the same time shooting it makes that shot accurate. This is quite difficult to do and the best way to practice this is like I'm showing you on screen. Find a column anywhere in the practice range or on a map and start to shoot it either side from left right left right to make sure that your shots are accurate. It's worth doing this for a couple of minutes at a time even just before games are in between games because this is a skill that will benefit you in the long run no doubt. And at number six we've got practice with the sheriff. This is for first bullet accuracy and something that I like doing a lot. Playing a lot of Sheriff, even in things like Spike Rush, but of course Deathmatch too. Just in general, getting that first bullet accuracy in is really solid with the Sheriff because if you miss that headshot, you are just dead a lot of the time. So then you can apply the same type of mentality with ARs and all of a sudden you'll find yourself being less sloppy with your AR aim. You shouldn't really rely on just seeing someone trying to flick roughly to them and then just spraying until you get that headshot. Those first one, two, three bullets really matter and the sheriff is a good place to start here. 
Don't forget to practice crosshair placement. It is such a huge part of aiming. The more you get this right, the less you have to move your mouse. And therefore, it should be a bit easier to hit those headshots. You should have to do smaller flicks within a smaller control zone that you're more used to. You can go into custom games and just try out all the different maps here. Get used to the spots you play a lot and maybe get a friend as well to just stand in the spot where the enemy would be so you can get that head height pre-aim just right. It's going to get you a lot of free kills. Don't forget that aiming is more than just moving your mouse. There's a lot of things you can learn here and getting movement just right as well is really important. Deathmatch is actually pretty good for this as you have to move around quite a bit in Valorant Deathmatch to get a lot of frags and you can get used to quickly going around a corner, reacting, stopping, shooting and then moving on. There's a lot of guns here where this differs a little bit like how much you have to do it of course but all in all moving whilst aiming is important. Learn to move whilst you're shooting. Don't just stand still and shoot bots in the practice range. I see a lot of people in Valorant playing to stay alive a lot, wanting teammates to go ahead of them so they can try to get that trade and even if they don't, just generally being scared to run in. It's okay to die in Valorant, it's not a battle royale game, you don't win by staying alive the longest, you win by playing the objective, playing with your team and getting those frags. You get practice from shooting, not hiding. Go and shoot some people, if you die that's okay, call out the info and hope that your teammates follow up. Next up, learn to hold angles actively or passively. This is for your teammate's sake and for your own sake. Sometimes it's good to be ready right as someone walks into an angle or an area to see them straight away and be able to shoot. Other times you might want to play later to have them check more angles, thus giving you a better chance, a little bit more time to aim, setting yourself up better. For example, if you're holding hookah actively on B on bind, you will be standing roughly around here and seeing pretty much straight into it. But if you're holding it passively, you might be sitting around a wall or something waiting for them to jump out of hookah. Those are very important distinctions to make. Your teammate might not be looking at the minimap and might die if you're not clear about where you're standing and how you're holding a particular spot. Tips number 11 and 12 are establishing a practice routine but be sure to spice it up occasionally. Establishing any form of habit or knowing what you should be doing can be a really difficult thing for a lot of people to do. Let's say, for example, going to the gym. It's often quite difficult to know what exercises you should be doing, what exercises you should be pairing together, and what you should be trying to avoid doing at the same time. And those same problems can be found when it comes to improving your aim. Luckily, when it comes to stuff like AimLab, you do have playlists which are community-made lists of game modes that have been put together in order to give you the best advantages. It's a link in the description to all of the most popular playlists made by the community, which includes streamers that have given their warm-up techniques and also game modes inspired by pros like Tense and what he does when he wants to practice his aim. And my personal favourite one is the one Haru made. It's got some really good game modes in there. It's got your grid shots, all of the classics like that, but also a few spicy game modes such as sniper shot. But instead of having a sniper, you actually just have a deagle, which is great for practicing moving headshots from distance, which you don't often get to really do in aim lab. But like Tip12 says, doing the same playlist over and over again isn't going to benefit you all that much. You need to throw in game modes that you don't usually do. You've got to try stuff that you might not practice all that much and you might suck at because these might be areas of your play that you really need to improve on. Lucky number 13, practice your peeking and don't make yourself an easy target. This is a problem that I still suffer from. People wide peek because they're not comfortable with taking the shots. That They don't feel that they could hit a target that's really close to a wall, for example. You give yourself a wide berth because you want to give yourself more room to react and get that shot down. But like I mentioned, if you do that, you stand out in the open and it's an easier kill for your enemy. The best way to practice this is in custom maps on common angles, much like Miska highlighted with crosshair placement. Being able to nail close peeking, crosshair placement and counter strafing, you don't need to have the godliest aim. You will be a nuisance to deal with. Tip number 14 is acknowledging over or under aiming but not changing your sense. Like I mentioned before, you don't want to change your sensitivity all the time. It will make your aim super inconsistent. But if you're doing something like aim lab or you're recording a game of deathmatch or ranked, for example, you need to pay attention if you're overshooting against your targets or not, especially when you're in game where you might not be focusing on where your aim is necessarily going. Knowing that you are undershooting or overshooting is the majority of the battle. You need to be aware of this and be mindful if you are doing this in order to get out of that habit. It might be the case that your sensitivity is a little bit too high or low, but gradually over time you'll get used to it. But you need to be aware of how your body's reacting to the shots that you're taking. 
Especially if that habit's causing you to not get easy kills like you should be. Tip number 15, being mindful of differences in aim lab, for example, versus game. I did this a lot when I practiced Counter-Strike in like deathmatch. I would be really relaxed doing deathmatch because it didn't matter that much. So my aim would be relatively consistent and I feel like I could flick to some really nutty headshots quite comfortably. But when I got into game, I noticed that I was really tense. I was nervous because I don't like playing ranked in games an awful lot and I'd get anxious because of it. And this would cause me to tense up my arms. It would cause me to go from having quite a loose grip on the mouse to holding it rather tightly. And because of this, I was making things harder for myself. The best way to relieve tension in areas like that is to just roll your shoulders a couple of times and believe me if you can get the tension out of your system and to just take a few breaths and realize that it's all just a game, sorry ninja, then you'll become less tense and your aim will become a lot more relaxed. Super important that you're aware of this. And up next learn spray pattern but focus on the first 10 bullets always practice range before you get into an actual match so you get reminded of these spray patterns the vandal and the phantom being the two most important ones of course but you can do other guns here as well this is something i do every single time i'm about to play competitive i feel like it's just good as a refresher and you can also kind of see your progress and see yourself get better after about 10 bullets it's not as important to get the spray just right it adds randomness and valorant as well it's not like counter strike but those first 10 bullets are important and if you learn the spray pattern you can adjust your aim in case you miss those first few bullets as well next up a simple one don't practice operator too much in the deathmatch without all the abilities going on it's just not as realistic of a scenario to be practicing the operator in sure if you really don't have a lot of time with it at all it might be nice to try it out here and there but even spike rush is better here to try and practice operator or marshal i would suggest to just play unrated though because the operator is a very special weapon with its high cost and of course one shot kills but just practicing it in deathmatch is not pretty gonna get you to the highest level of play you need to be able to play with and around abilities with it too and at number 18 put time and thought into re-peaking the same angle a different angle you gotta choose here and don't go too fast for your own good put a little bit of thought into it is this a person that tends to hold that angle back on you what weapon do they have how far away were they could they have more teammates behind that you didn't see so you're gonna get double peaked if you re-peak there's a lot of questions you can ask yourself here especially if you got characters with movement abilities too or something that can throw off the enemy before you re-peak them put time and thought into re-peaking don't just get greedy and go oh i saw a person there i want to peek again and try and get the frag or i just killed someone on this angle let's peek it again to get another kill it's rarely that straightforward next one comes highly recommended from a lot of people and it's also a very quick tip practice before bed go into the practice range go into aim lab whatever type of practice you might be doing in game in deathmatch whatever practice before bed and next something that i feel like is really important to emphasize don't make things harder than they need to be now that might sound a little bit dumb but listen to this does the enemy have no armor? Don't go for headshots. Do you have a shotgun? Play a close range angle. These are things that are just going to help you get easy frags and keep this in mind a lot of the time. Sometimes you might just be picking up a marshal into an eco round and you might be trying way too hard to go for those headshots. Sometimes you just don't need to and go for those easy frags when you get them. That's how you win more games. Tip number 21 is learning how to reset your aim. After every frag or every twist and turn you do with your mouse, you really want to be resetting your mouse right into the center of the mouse pad. This is known as resetting your aim, and it can be a really difficult habit to get into, especially if you've never done it before. There is a game mode in Aimlob that's quite good for this, and that's Spider Shot 180. You shoot a couple of targets on one side, then you have to turn 180 degrees behind you to shoot the targets then. It's also a great way to just warm up your wrists or even your shoulder to get used to making big mouse movements where you usually wouldn't. Tip number 22, make your practice difficult, but not impossible. Kind of like I mentioned before, you don't want your practice to be super easy to the point that you're not really trying. However, there are a lot of game modes in Aimlab, for example, that are incredibly difficult. Even for me and Miska, we might go, oh, this is really tough. But I also think that people do this when it comes to the goals that they set. Get into a particular rank in a short amount of time. It might seem possible, but it's reliant on you having consistently good games, your team having consistently good games, and even the enemies being bad. Practicing stuff like aim over a long period of time is monotonous and hard enough as it is. Don't make that impossible by giving yourself impossible standards to keep up to. Not even just with aim, just across life. Don't put that pressure on yourself. 
Tip number 23, don't take a day off. Seriously, don't take a day off. It's not so much that this practice will keep you going better and better. You need to put the time in. But if you take a day off of practice in anything, you're going to get rusty, especially in games that are as aim intensive as Valorant. I know people's lives are tough right now and can be really busy and stressful, but I promise you 15 to 20 minutes of aim lab or just a couple of games of spike rush or deathmatch will help you in the long run, I promise. Play to practice aim. I hear a lot of people, myself included, that say that they want to improve aim, but when they go into game, it's never their focus. They're not thinking about counter strafing. They're not thinking about close peeking corners. They're not even thinking about aim, really. They might pick up kill draw and be like, oh, I want to practice this. The idea of improving your aim in certain situations never crosses your mind. If you want to practice aim, you need to focus on practicing aim almost exclusively. And this is probably the hardest tip to do, if I'm being honest. But even just a sticky note on your monitor saying practice aim is a great way to constantly remind yourself in game what you want to be focusing on. And tip number 25, be consistent outside of game with things such as sleep, health and even posture. Most people don't want to have god tier aim. They just want to have consistent aim because they know that some games they can play really well and some games they don't. To be consistent with your aim, you need to be consistent in your life. You need to make sure that you're getting enough sleep, that you're eating the right foods, that you're even sat in the right way. Put time into checking that your chair and your armrests are the right height if you do use them, your desk is the right height, your monitor is the right height. I know being ergonomic on stuff like this could be super boring and disinteresting, but it's not even about making your aim comfortable and consistent. It's about not doing damage to yourself in the long run when it comes to shoulder or posture pain. Like seriously, it's a big deal, so be careful and look after yourself when it comes to these areas. Not only because it will improve your aim, but also just improve your life generally. Next up, something that I feel like I see as a mistake made a lot in mid ranks especially, move more after you get a kill. That dead enemy just called out your position and now you're getting pre-aimed, losing your previous advantage of popping out from an angle that they weren't expecting you on or something along those lines. Point is, don't just always re-peek. Even if you didn't get that kill, you are gonna get called out. It's good to move, especially if you shift moving around the same site so you're being quiet. Let's say you're defending A on Pine and you're peeking lamps first into short or something like that. You get a few pot shots off but you don't get a kill. You can fall back after that quietly and try to peek from sight next. They might still be looking at lamps a little bit more there. Or if they're two people, one of them might be looking at lamps and the other one might be looking at you, making that second kill opportunity a little bit more viable. Don't be lazy here with your movement, just move around a little bit. Up next, another quick and simple one, Get a big mouse pad. It's pretty cheap nowadays and there's no excuse if you're looking to improve and if you're watching this video you're clearly serious about aim so just make sure you got a big mouse pad and not one of those tiny ones you can barely move your arm around. You need more than just wrist aim here. Up next, practice spray transfers. It's a bigger deal than you think. I love practicing spray transfers, I've done that a lot and I can really see the improvement in game. I've experienced it many times in Valorant just landing spray transfers that I didn't think I would land just out of nowhere, feeling like just some robot took over for me. It feels great when it happens and you can practice them very easily in the Valorant practice range. And now, just because I feel like I've said the word practice so much, don't over practice aim. This is a pretty straightforward tip as well, but there's a lot of people out there that might spend hours and hours in aim trainers and that's great, just not all in one go and not all in one day. Spread your training out, make it regular, stick to it and make sure you're not just putting in hours for the sake of putting in hours. Don't exhaust yourself here. And tip 30, last but absolutely not least, aiming isn't everything. Abilities, ultimates, movements and other tricks are just as if not more important in Valorant overall. You need to have these things down. Really good map knowledge for example could help you with pre-aiming better and understanding what the enemy is doing and reading a play. Yes, aim is incredibly important too. But if you're just running in like an idiot every match you're not really gonna get a lot done. Developing good game knowledge and game sense is also super key and if you're struggling in either of those areas then just getting better at aiming isn't necessarily gonna get you all the way. Figure out which other areas you might be lacking in and all of a sudden you might notice that your aim isn't actually that bad. You might have just been doing a poor job setting yourself up for success. And that's it for this time. Thank you very much for watching. Definitely check out Aim Lab in the description. Hopefully you've enjoyed all of the gameplay on screen and you can see just how useful it can be to improve your aim in Valorant. Like and subscribe if you haven't already and take care and see you next time.